Rich, thank you very much, Rich Setson. My next guest voted today on the $829 billion Baucus bill, but with tax hikes looming and millions still uninsured, he was not on board. Idaho Senator Mike Crapo is on the Senate Finance Committee. He voted no. Senator, where is this going now, and what are its likelihood uh, sort of gambling bets of success? Well, you know, as you indicated, we voted on a bill, or should I say a concept paper today. The bill still hasn't been written, and yet it's being rewritten and merged into another bill as we speak somewhere in the Capitol behind closed doors. What we do know is that the vote today was for a bill that increased the size of government somewhere between $800 billion and a $1 trillion over the next 10 years, increased taxes by about and penalties by about $500 billion, and cuts Medicare by about $400 billion, and as you said, it does not stop the skyrocketing increases in the price of health insurance and does not achieve universal coverage, which well, were the two key reasons you know, why we were supposed to be working on it. Or, but, you know, both sides, Senator, pardon me if I'm a little thick here, but sure. they, they throw out numbers that just seem staggering to me. Where did you get the $500 billion in Medicare that's going to be cut? Because that's a lot. It, the, the net result in Medicare is $400 billion. It comes right out of the CBO score on this concept paper in the Finance Committee. But isn't that it's offset so that the net... No, no, but isn't that offset that the net is, is not nearly that? No, that is the net number. The, the actual gross number is larger. The net number is $404 billion of cuts in Medicare. But and you're stating... Say no, you, the, well, no, the way no, that's framed, though, Senator, is it makes it look like... Everyone in Medicare, you're going to see big cuts to the tune of 400 billion plus, and you're not going to get squat in return. When in fact, whether you're for this or not, you are going to get something in return, right? Well, if you're on Medicare and you're one of the four in Medicare, one one out of every four in Medicare is on Medicare Advantage, you are going to see your benefits significantly reduced. Uh, there is not a reduction in the statutory Medicare benefit, but all that means is that we're going to continue driving toward that cliff when Medicare goes bankrupt. But the reason why I ask that, though, Senator, later. it's an important point because the reason why I ask that is then you're assuming that the companies that are handling this, the insurance companies, are going to pass along those, those benefit cuts or those increased costs that they're experiencing to their customers when in this environment they would probably be ill-advised to do so, right? Well, uh, actually, both the Congressional Budget Office and the Joint Committee on Taxation have indicated that, in fact, yes, the vast majority of those cuts will be passed on and will show up in increased how do they know? premiums, but how increased do they know? cost of medical devices. Well, th these are the ones who make these kinds of economic predictions about what the impact of the provisions in the bill will be. And uh, they have made these judgments based on their evaluation of the economy and their handling of these kinds of tax provisions over the years. So when they, in the net, say this is going to be deficit neutral, you're not buying that part of it? Oh, it'll be definite neutral, but it's a representation of about $500 billion of new taxes, about $400 billion in cuts in Medicare, and then about eight to $900 billion in new spending. When, it, when you net it all out, I there is you. a small reduction in the deficit. But remember this, too. This reduction in the deficit is off budget, which means that it's deficit dollars coming out of the Social Security Trust Fund, which is another point that they don't want to talk about. All right, and maybe we'll talk about it on another visit. Senator, great having you. Thank you very much.